last one I want to bring you because there's a developing story in the science community. It's happening right now. There's a rare geomagnetic magnetic storm occurring. A powerful solar storm hit Earth today, and aside from the amazing images, Had a severe solar storm smack the Earth with a surprisingly big geomagnetic jolt on Tuesday, but no damage has been reported. The storm ranked a four on a scale of five. Two magnetic plasma bursts left the sun on Sunday and got to Earth about 15 hours earlier and much stronger than had been expected. A cool sighting over Switzerland and Austria last night. Check it out. What appears to be a meteor is caught on camera streaking across the sky. That's amazing. Some people in Europe had a spectacular view this morning if the clouds didn't get in the way. A total solar eclipse took place. We've entered the peak of the eclipse. I have to say there's an eerie darkness that has descended on parts of the capital. On the ground on the Faroe Isles, day turns to night. Those watching plunged into darkness. Millions of people in more than a dozen countries stopped what they were doing and looked up. A black hole in the sky offering a rare glimpse at the sun's outer atmosphere. There it is, the diamond ring. A solar eclipse coming at the same time as a supermoon, the closest it gets to the Earth, and the vernal equinox, the first day of spring. A rare cosmic coincidence. A new mystery tonight. Wildlife resource officers are trying to figure out why dozens of birds drop dead out of the sky at the same time in Spring Hill. It was an eerie scene, as you can see here, with more than 50 birds on the road. Wildlife officers bagged some birds and took samples, but they say they've never seen anything like this. Pictures show some of the thousands of snow geese found dead in eastern Idaho. The carcasses stretched for dozens of acres and were first noticed on Friday. There's no, no doubt that 2,000 birds died there. Uh. I'm up every day and think that's the end of it and I wake up the next morning and look out and there's like there's another 50, 60, 70. This woman says hundreds of dead fish are popping up along the shore outside her home. Teresa Williams has lived in the Bridgewater neighborhood for about 11 years but for the past week or so she says she's been waking up to an unpleasant sight. Something fishy is happening on the beaches of the Outer Banks. Lots of fish, and a lot of you are talking about it. Ten of your side viewers emailed us dozens of pictures of dead fish along the shoreline. So what is going on? Another mystery of sorts, the whereabouts of Vladimir Putin. Just this morning, the Russian president made his first public appearance in nearly two weeks. But did he shed any light on where he's been? Russia has kicked off massive five-day military drills some bit spiraling tensions with the West over the crisis in Ukraine. NATO fighter jets are landing in Estonia for large-scale military exercises, which the U.S. and several European countries are conducting near the Russian border. Pope Francis marks the second anniversary of his surprise election by predicting that he will not be pope for much longer. Francis predicts his pontificate will only last about two or three more years. Tonight, an 11-member task force is telling President Obama how police departments across the country must change. He asked for the recommendations after the shooting death of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and the choking death of Eric Garner in New York. The task force on 21st century policing offered a wide range of suggestions on training and deadly force, but most of the recommendations boil down to one thing, trust. It will be good for police and it will be good for the communities involved and as a consequence it will be good for the country. The moment is now for us to make these changes. We have a great opportunity coming out of some uh, great conflict and tragedy uh, to really transform uh, how we think about uh, community law enforcement relations uh, so that everybody feels safer. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're wondering what DeKalb Police Department is doing with your taxpayer's dollar and how they're, how they're protecting and serving today, um, this is it. They are progressing their militarized agenda. They are currently training in these abandoned houses. Upon an evacuation notice, the subdivision of Overton, the, the residents chose not to leave. So we are doing a door-to-door -door wellness check. The Ferguson police chief resigned and that peaceful protest that suddenly took a turn. <laughs> Gunfire erupting, protesters and police running for cover, hiding behind the brick wall there. And when it was over, that image of one of the officers down. The words come after a tense 24-hour manhunt. Authorities digging for clues to track down the gunman who shot two police officers. Alicia Turner was inside the home with her six-year-old son and two acquaintances when police showed up and took the adults in for questioning. All three were released without being arrested or charged. Now the Turner family says police owe them an apology and much more. He thinking something gonna happen to me. He is afraid. Irisha Turner is talking about her six-year-old son, MJ, who she says was traumatized by watching police with guns swarm his family's home and take his mother away in handcuffs. Had to talk him off and under a bed last night. Turner tells me she was at the protest early Thursday morning when the two officers were shot. She says after the gunfire, she ran to her car, which was parked close to where the gunman opened fire. They said I sped off on the scene, but everybody sped off. People was running, people was, you know, ducking. A few hours later, police had surrounded Turner's home, saying they wanted to ask her some questions. They even broke into the attic. Turner says she was treated more like a suspect the entire time. Flared tempers tonight after a deputy shoots a man in the face in Deltona. Critics in the community think that deputy was out of line. Today they were demanding answers from the sheriff. There's no advancement. There was no reaching for anything. The guy was wearing basketball shorts like I am, you know. These are several of the four men and two women in the house when SWAT arrived. They didn't want to give their names but say their friend was not armed, didn't charge the deputy, or challenge him with a weapon. They, they entered the house and fired immediately. He didn't have a weapon on him? No, sir. There's no weapons in the house. They, they came in with a certain intent and purpose, and they met their goal. When police officers are wearing camouflage, it sends a very clear message to, uh, to the community that they're supposed to be serving. It also affects the mindset of the police officer uh, himself. Uh, you know, the, the, the idea that, you know, when we take 
domestic police officers and we, we train them like soldiers and we give them military gear and we dress them up like soldiers. Prominent academic and author Dr. Michelle Chosodovsky warned that the so-called war on terrorism is a front to propagate America's global hegemony and create a new world order. St. Louis High School is one of the first in the nation to have a new kind of security. Facial recognition cameras scan people's faces as they try to get in the building. If you're not in their system, you can't get in. Come into this door, walk through, look at the camera. His face is recognized and he's allowed in. Recognize my face, the light goes on, and then I can open the door. There's controversy at a high school during the Pledge of Allegiance, a lesson on language turns into questions about patriotism. CBS 2's Lou Young reports on a school divided. Tonight, our country's symbol of freedom has been taken down by the student government at UC Irvine because it makes them more culturally inclusive. That move has sparked huge debate tonight, including at the school's sister campus, UC San Diego. Last week, the Legislative Council at UC Irvine voted to ban all flags, including the American flag, from hanging in common areas of any student government offices, a decision that has left many veterans dumbfounded. It's preposterous. You know, I, I can't understand it. Time to wake up, America. If you just stepped foot on earth and saw what was going on in America, there's a good chance you'd think we were enemies with Israel and allies with Iran. This week, President O finally picked up the phone to congratulate the Prime Minister on his re-election. Then President Obama dropped a bomb. He added a warning to Netanyahu, play ball with me or else. In fact, the Obama administration is considering taking actions against Israel, our greatest ally. My name is John Yarmouth of Kentucky. Um, gathered with me are colleagues, all of whom opposed the appearance of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu today. John Yarmouth of Kentucky is here to tell us why he chose to stay away. What I objected to was the fact that he pulled out the Dick Cheney playbook, uh, used fear-mongering, made statements that are totally unsupportable. Those are, again, scaremongering tactics that don't advance the, the dialogue. And I knew he was going to do that, and that's one of the reasons I objected to the speech. My 18 years of law enforcement, I haven't seen this. Pile up stranded hundreds, creating traffic nightmares that made national headlines. Cars stuck, abandoned, turning a busy highway into an eerie graveyard. The line of stranded tractor trailers stretched down the highway for 40 miles. Icy roads caused several accidents that shut down two major highways in Kentucky, stranding more than 600 vehicles overnight. This is the second such declaration in less than a month. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I just feel the fire guy on me right now, like so bad, man. I've, I've been talking to people, and, and I told you guys about the dream that I had, you know, a couple months ago. I seen fire falling from heaven, and in each state, there was like an individual there waiting for the fire of God to fall on them. I'm telling you right now, there is a move of God coming, man. I feel the power and the Holy Ghost on me so strong, and God is about to bring the backsliders back. There is an army rising up. There is an army rising up, and I'm telling you right now, you want to be a part of it. Because you know what? The enemy's trying to move too. Man, look at the news. Look at the evilness that is going on in this world. Look at the corruption. Look at the gay marriage. Look at these young people disrespecting elders, beating up elders for no reason. People jumping people. Look at the violence that is shared all across Facebook and world star to the point where you're getting desensitized. Look at just the gay people just trying to invade everything. Everything. The devil's voice is loud and clear and he's trying to defy God stronger than ever before you guys think that I'm the only one who's fired up for God no I'm telling you there's people all over the world God is rising raising up an army and it is about to be crazy this earth is about to be shook there is an army that is rising up you need to be a part of it soldier up man up make up your mind that you're gonna be sold out for Jesus don't let the devil punk you don't let nobody else make you feel ashamed and we're going to start the mix with the end of days. It was seen in Australia overnight. Yeah, 
take a look at this. Wow. This freaky springtime storm in Australia was seen in Brisbane yesterday. We're getting word. Look at this guy. He posted that this was a reminder to never go to Brisbane in the spring. Wow. When he posted that video. Um, 28,000 lightning strikes recorded in this storm what? that took place 6.30 in the evening. That night. is crazy. You know... Hundreds of fish have washed up on a beach south of Perth. Local fishermen are angry. There's still no word on what's caused the deaths. Kim Burton has been fishing Coburn Sound for almost four decades, but he's never seen anything like this. Just saw multiple dead fish on the beach, um, probably seven or eight different species. More than 700 fish have washed ashore since last Wednesday, but why remains a mystery. Here's another one. This is the biggest fish kill we've seen in the oceanic waters. Testing done by the Department of Fisheries so far hasn't been able to find a cause. Investigations are continuing. 2015, with all the resources of government and all the things that they've got at their disposal, it's really disappointing that they can't tell us any more. Even the author of Charlotte's Web could not have spun this story. Or maybe it's best described as a sci-fi thriller. Either way, there's an eight-legged problem causing headaches for some homeowners in North Memphis. Frost or morning dew covering the grass in this neighborhood near Chelsea in May. I've never seen anything. 34 years and I never saw this. <laughs> never seen nothing like this before. When I got up this morning, it was like spiders all on my door. They were coming in my house. Yeah, well, a sinkhole the size of a football field has swallowed a large part of a beach on North Stradbroke Island off Brisbane. Tons of sand disappeared into the sea, but authorities say the sand will likely return with the tide. Experts are calling it an underwater avalanche. Campers and fishermen are being warned to avoid the area until the beach stabilises. A downtown favourite has reopened after an unusual phenomenon forced them to close for the first time in almost a quarter century. The Elephant Room had to shut down back on November 13th after a sinkhole opened up. The owner wasn't sure how long they would be closed or if they could reopen at all. It's the first time they'd closed their doors since opening back in January of 1991. A man thought he was driving into a parking spot, but his car ended up being swallowed by a sinkhole. Half of the car Andy Liston was driving is in this big hole. He lives on Folsom Street in South City. He parked there because somebody was parked in his normal spot. Liston says as soon as he pulled up, the ground opened up. I pulled in and this thing, you know, my whole car fell in. And I hit my head on the steering wheel, but I was so scared that I just jumped out the driver's side, like on a movie, just jumped out the passenger side, I mean. It's a question that just appears just won't be solved. Picture after picture coming in to Channel 9, of course, of that crazy cloud formation. So many of you sending in these pictures uh, across the tri-state, really. And tonight, weather experts are still stumped about what could have caused this? One thing we do know, it carried on for miles and miles in the sky. What the heck was this? It was seen over across the tri-state today, and a lot of folks got nervous because the obvious look is, oh my goodness, it's a funnel cloud. As you take a closer look at it, it's kind of broken up a little bit. There's some jaggedness. It's not quite held together, but boy, it caused a lot of folks to wonder. We were talking about it this morning. Jennifer Ketchmark ended up talking to the Weather Service. They didn't know what it was. Many of you called our newsroom or sent us messages on our Facebook page saying that you heard it. People in Boyle and Mercer counties reported a loud boom that shook their homes last night. Emergency crews investigated but couldn't find any sign of an explosion. He said was he sent me an article about the explosion. Felicia Kelly and her daughter Michaela say they like the quiet, peaceful farmland area around Parksville in western Boyle County. This is as loud as it gets out here. So you can imagine the surprise when that tranquility was suddenly broken Thursday night. It sounded like a loud, like an explosion or something. I mean, it wasn't, it was, it was kind of different because it was just kind of a dull boom. Yeah, it was more of a sound. It was a boom, you know, it was a loud uh, explosion type. The Danville 911 Center received at least 15 phone calls. It was apparently heard in neighboring Mercer, Lincoln, and Garrett counties as well. There's been a lot of theories floating around as to what exactly it was. The prevailing one, police are telling me possibly a meteor shower and the resulting sonic boom from that. 
And some people told us they actually heard two loud booms, but no one reported actually seeing anything in the sky. At five, that section of Vasquez Canyon Road that buckled several days ago is still closed to traffic. But as Eyewitness News reporter Annabel Munoz reports, the unstable road is now attracting the curious. Vasquez Canyon Road in Santa Clarita has become quite the eyesore over the past few days. Professor Jeremy Boyce said, quote, there was no big rainstorm that triggered this. There was no big earthquake that triggered this. The long arcing up and down street grew 15 feet in three days, which has completely stumped local geologists. I just don't understand it. Uh, you know, like I say, I've lived here all these years and I've never uh, uh, seen anything really like this. The Oklahoma Corporation Commission wants companies to close two wells and cut back at 23 others after a series of earthquakes today. It happened near Cherokee, which is about two and a half hours west of Tulsa. The U.S. Geological Survey says people in 13 states say they felt that earthquake. Four more earthquakes happened in that same area today and two others near Crescent, Oklahoma. The U.S. Geological Survey says a 5.9 magnitude earthquake has struck northern Afghanistan. Well, if you thought you felt the earth move beneath you in the early morning hours, you're not alone. A small earthquake registering at 3.6 shook the area near Cornwall today just after midnight. The quake was reported 15 kilometers from Cornwall. There are reports that residents heard a loud crack before the rumbling began lasting around 20 minutes. Good evening, everyone. The New Madrid fault caused quite a stir this morning and throughout the afternoon. You may have felt it. There were 12 earthquakes reported today, all centered near, near Lilburn, Missouri. One man working in the area says all the rumbling woke him up. I was laying in bed and it hit, and I thought it done broke the bed down. I thought, I thought the bed done broke completely down with, with, with hard as it hit. And it wasn't too long later, and I had, we had another hard thud. But so many quakes so close together is a bit unusual. Some folks in Schuylkill County are feeling a bit rattled after something that felt like an explosion shook the floors and windows of their homes. But Friday night, something shattered the peace and quiet. Well, I was just sitting here on the couch, and it was around 9.30, and just a big boom, like it was almost like a quarter stick, and the house shook and the windows shook. The Sterners weren't the only family to hear their windows rattle. 
Reports of explosions were phoned into the state police from across southern Schuylkill County. Worldwide travel alert in place. The AAA, the AAA estimates that 47 million people will travel this week. So 41. Security in New York City is high in advance of this Thursday's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You, you like seeing the heavily armed officers? I love it. I took a picture and put it on Instagram. Tonight, police in Colorado Springs, Colorado, are trying to figure out why a gunman attacked a Planned Parenthood clinic yesterday in our nation's latest mass shooting. Brussels has been on virtual lockdown for the past week. A Russian military jet shot down not by ISIS, but by Turkey. We are also following some breaking news involving another attack on a hotel overseas, this time in Egypt. That country's state-run news agency says a suicide car bomber tried to hit the hotel in a tourist area of the Sinai Peninsula. There was a shootout and at least three police officers are dead and a dozen injured.